an intricate relationship exists between the Western Ghats and its people. Indigenous tribes and agriculturists have subsisted of these rich and fertile lands for centuries. But with the gap between urban and rural incomes growing fast and the pressures on natural resources mounting, the Ghats' capacity to sustain the livelihoods of rural communities is diminishing rapidly. To arrest this trend, AERF in Maharashtra and Junglescapes in Karnataka are working to transform rural economies based on destructive practices to those that are sustainable and scientifically sound. Working hand in hand with local communities, they are bridging the gap between economies and conservation. Bandipur is, of course, very well known for its tigers, but it's also one of the premier elephant habitats in India. There is a very high diversity of plants. There are more than 150 to 200 tree species alone here. Historically, it, it must have been much more diverse because now we have a lot of uh, lantana. Lantana is an exotic plant which has come to India about uh, 150 to 200 years back. The Britishers brought it from Latin America, basically as an ornamental plant. Lantana is well equipped to be an invasive species. Each plant produces thousands of flowers. And secondly, it produces a huge number of seeds. So the lantana prevents the regeneration of the tree species as well. Because no fresh stock of uh, tree saplings are coming up. If you look at Bandipur, more than 60% of the land area is uh, covered by lantana. So in a way, the forest is dying, a slow death. Mainly the herbivores get less food to eat. And this also creates human-animal conflict because the herbivores then tend to go to the villages to forage into the agricultural lands. So you have about 174 villages dotting the periphery of the Bandipur Tiger Reserve. The majority of them are indigenous tribes. These people have uh, small parcels of land, but most of the land is lying uncultivated because water availability is very poor. So you'll find most of these forest dwelling communities now working as daily laborers in local farms they lose the knowledge about the forest. So in the larger scheme of things, it is not sustainable. A project is trying to identify a good method of removing lantana and restoring the lantana removed areas to healthy wildlife habitats. The second part of the project is to develop alternate livelihood options for the forest dwelling communities, which is based on the lantana that is removed. We approached the forest department with the idea, got their inputs, got their approval for doing this in the Lokeri Reserve Forest, which falls within the buffer zone of Bandipur. We have adopted the method which is called the cut rootstock method. It only involves cutting the rootstock of the plant two inches below the ground. So there's very little disturbance of the soil. If the lantana removed area has a large number of native species present, then our focus is on preserving those native species and helping them to grow faster. If the area has a very few number of native species, then we'll have to introduce those native species there. Lantana Craft is making small craft items like keychain stands, the candle stands, the mobile phone holders, etc. This activity is uh, particularly uh, suited for women because they can go home for an hour or two to take care of children, come back and continue with the work. So it can be done at their own flexible timings. The restoration program has been very successful. So you can see that a small area like 10,000 square feet is now fairly biodiverse, small habitat. And the, the resurgence of lantern has been very low. So we are talking with the forest department as to how the restoration activity can be expanded to the Bandipur Tiger Reserve. Most of the wildlife sanctuaries in the Western Ghats have lantana intensity which is similar to that of Bandipur. The CAPF grant has actually been the trigger for this entire lantana management project. Now that the pilot project has been successful over a five acre plot, the learnings from here can be applied in many places in the Western Ghats.
the northern western ghats landscapes as far as maharashtra is concerned in terms of the uniqueness you have forest on the top on the crest there are very less forest on the slopes and then there are lower hills where quite a bit of forest is there we are working in the landscapes where the ownership is with the communities but over the years we have also worked in uh, protected areas in the northern western ghats so we have sufficient experience of working with communities who are living in the protected areas uh, and also communities who are living outside protected areas we have significant animal biodiversity uh, in spite of the fact that most of the forests are owned by communities and in certain pockets we see that the health of the forest on community lands is even better from the forest in in the protected areas indigenous communities still are very much dependent on forest and the non timber forest produce one of the major threats to the forest landscape is illegal felling of trees and expansion of agriculture and urbanization that is because of the poor understanding of economic benefits of sustainable utilization of biodiversity money earned from selling forest to logging contractors cannot be called as sustainable income we wanted to introduce a thought where conservation will not mean foregoing any economic benefits that you can actually earn more by following good practices like the fair wild certification you can get at least 300% more for the same produce that you sell in the local market if that thought can be communicated to the local communities i think they would still manage the resources sustainably the terminal bilika trees are an ecosystem in themselves they support a variety of plants animals they are hosting nesting sites of great hornbills local communities will be benefiting for the first time in last 25 years from the sale of fruits of terminal bilika that practice was uh, has been revived through sale of these fruits in the first year we are making uh, a turnover of 2.5 lakhs if you go to visit communities in bima shankar which have been collecting aritaki fruits from their forests for last 300 years their understanding of that resource remains still poor for the first time after the sanctuary was declared they got their trees recorded on their land and that in turn means they have got access to the free market which was not the case before this project came into being i think in terms of uh, direct benefits the indigenous communities from bima shankar through the fair wild project they are getting 400% rise while they sold fruits of uh, terminal chebula to the processing center that we have set up through the green entrepreneurship project we can measure the conservation benefits i can uh, tell you in the first year we are saving 1000 giant trees of terminal bilirka because of the sustainable collection of the fruits similarly we are saving about 30 nesting sites of hornbills vast tracts of the forest in the northern western ghats are still owned by local communities people are gradually understanding that logging of forest is not a sustainable income that developing value chains and using resources sustainably is actually the true answer I think the support from Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund has been extremely important for AERF to extend its work at a landscape level. I think this is a significant leap in our own understanding of how businesses if biodiversity based business enterprises can actually contribute to conservation. By introducing new and original ideas into the Western Ghats' rural economic systems, AERF and Junglescapes have demonstrated successful green economy models. By linking producers to markets for environmentally sustainable products, these groups have shown that with the right approach, conservation of nature can deliver more economic benefits than unsustainable exploitation. Such examples point the way to the wider emergence of green economies in the Western Ghats.